Hello, 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 and what is going on, everybody? It is Master of the TDS, and I am joined by my lovely wife, Riding Raven. And we're back for another episode of Psycho Synopsis. Indeed. A segment where we summarize all the psycho for you. Just a scattering of topics throughout the week, all summarized into one neat little package for you to enjoy and consume at your leisure. You are welcome. So we got a couple topics today, and unfortunately, one of the topics is not going to be too positive, but we'll roll with the punches. Yeah. Uh, just before we begin today, if you have not already, please make sure to subscribe and share the channel with your friends. We are trying to push very hard for 2K subscribers by the end of this year. We're still a little bit of a ways off, but I think we can do it, but we need your guys' help. So if you have not subscribed, please do so and share it out if you can. We would really appreciate it. Yes, we would. With that said, let us begin with the first client, which again is Twitter. You still have to pay $8. Rest in tweets. Hashtag RIP Twitter has topped the trending list with users expressing concern over the platform's future after a mass staff exodus following Elon Musk's quote, hardcore, end quote, ultimatum. Basically, people didn't want to work. Well, that and also uh, he kind of made it very clear that he's going to be running Twitter a different way and people didn't like that. Now, it started to make rip Twitter trend and it, it as of the time of making this video uh, Twitter's still there yeah like they're literally literally the whole trending tab was Twitter is dead goodbye Twitter Twitter is over party etc and then he also unbanned a couple people for so example uh, Kathy Griffin Jordan Peterson and the Babylon Bee mm -hmm. and just yesterday he actually unbanned the account of one Donald Trump mm-hmm now, we're not going to go into the particulars of that. I understand that some people like watching those meltdowns on Twitter about it, and, you know, I'm all for watching them. Yeah, but we try not to go into politics on our channel. Yeah, the meltdowns are funny. I oh, will yeah. say that. Uh, but Elon Musk has run a bunch of different businesses for quite some time. And these people making it into a huge thing where it's like, he's firing people, he's not serving them free lunch, all this kind of stuff. It's like... You know, most businesses, you're lucky if you get free anything. Yeah, that's true. And some people can argue, well, in tech jobs, you get free whatever. And n No, not necessarily. The company had a ton of employees. It was hemorrhaging money. And now it might actually become profitable. Mm hmm Especially with less people who with more with more of a work ethic can make the company more money than they did otherwise when they had what 7,500 people essentially doing nothing yeah they had that many people and we, from what we know uh the I, I don't know exact number of how many people elon has left now i've been told that it's somewhere around 50 but he's still able to keep the site running as well as it has so uh what were the other people doing sipping chai lattes according to tiktok and wine on tap and all this kind of stuff. And again, people are like, you've unbanned Trump, you've unbanned this, we're going to leave. Then leave. This is not an airport. But didn't CBS leave and then yesterday and then literally today they came back? Yeah, and CBS was like, we're not coming, we're leaving because of misinformation and security risks. And then they're like, well, no companies came with us, I guess we'll have to come back. Um, yeah, yeah, we're back now, ha ha ha. Ha <sighs> It's hilarious to watch. Look, I'm not saying he's done everything perfect. Elon definitely has a long road ahead. Mm -hmm. However, he has made changes where there were no changes before. Some of his ideas haven't worked out exactly the way that he wanted them to. But to be fair, he's everything he has to do right now is trial and error to see what works. Exactly. He's experimenting to figure out what will work and what will make him the most money. People claiming that Twitter's going to die, whatever. No. Yeah, no. Twitter's not going to die. And people are saying, well, now that Trump's been unbanned, Apple and, you know, it's going to pull Apple and Android are going to pull them from the stores. You, you do realize Truth Social is on the App Store, right? The one that Trump made? Which has access to him? You guys are dumb. Yeah, look, we're not getting into the politics. It's just silly. Twitter's not dead. Has it 
had some changes? Absolutely. Can people have concerns out of the changes? Absolutely. But don't say it's dead. It's not. If you don't like what's going on, then you can leave. But we don't need... It's not an airport. You do not need to announce your departure. Just leave. No one cares. Yeah, what he said. Shall we move on? Next, we have Jason David Frank. Rest in peace. Jason David Frank, 1973 to 2002. One of the original Power Rangers has died. JDF is best known as Tommy Oliver from the original run of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers franchise dating back to the kids series debut in 1993. Yeah, and I've also re more recently seen him in stuff with the YouTube channel Bat in the Sun for whenever they do a video involving a Power Ranger, he's always the one under the suit. Yeah, he was a guy, look, I'm gonna be completely blunt. I remember vaguely watching Power Rangers when I was younger. I do not remember exactly him. That said, that doesn't mean I don't, you know, feel sad that he's gone. And obviously I understand that he was very, very, very good to his fans. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people are very touched by this and very like, you know, it hit them very hard. And I get that. And I'm not trying to disrespect those people. I'm just being upfront with that. I knew who this person was but it wasn't something that hit me as hard. That does not mean I think that this is a not a tragedy or anything like that. I'm just making it very clear that if it seems like I don't have a lot of knowledge around him, it's because I don't have a lot of knowledge around him. Same, I didn't see that movie, that Power Rangers movie until I was what, 15? I'm a, I was late to the party with these things. Yeah, we all know who he is. We we're recognize him and again, people are very much missing him and whatever but unfortunately he took his own life uh, mm -hmm. from what we've heard yeah uh there was a lot of rumors about it beforehand and then it was confirmed and it's sad that he's he's gone uh, a lot of people will miss him yeah it's really one of the worst ways to go and you know i'll miss him too again you know i, I can't think of the green power ranger without him but at the same time aside from his role in the power rangers whatever i know he's done other things i did not know or follow his career as much as maybe I should have or maybe I you know would have but you know a lot of people will miss him oh yes and so uh just I, I right before Thanksgiving uh it's gonna be very very hard on his family this year so shout out to his family if you haven't already and you know how to please reach out to his family and send them you know let them know that we're thinking of them. Yeah, send them some love. They need it right now. Mm-hmm. So does everybody. Yeah. Let's move on. Next, we have Transformers Earthspark. Nightshade's pronouns are they, them. No one cares. After releasing all 10 episodes of its first season to Paramount Plus on November 11th, Transformers Earthspark has revealed the series' first ever non-binary Transformer. When until now they have literally had male and female robots? Has pe have people forgotten about RC? Well, in the comics, they've retconned RC that RC was actually male and was strapped down and experimented on it, and it changed her CNA and made her, made him, made him into a her. What? Yeah, that's in the comics. That's stupid. I, I didn't believe it when I read it. Come on, I love RC. Deleting from brain. Deleting from brain. I know we're going to get the comments. They're not robots. They're cybernetic organisms from the planet Cybertron. No one cares. We already know that part, but why do they need to have pronouns if they're from another planet? Because maybe they aren't male or female. You know what? I don't care. I don't care. And I'm not going to use they, them pronouns for Nightshade. It's a fictional character. Cry me a river. I don't care. I've never even heard of that Transformer. Well, it's poisonous. <laughs> True, Deadly Nightshade is quite a powerful herb. Are you implying that people who have they, them pronouns are poison? No, just people with the word Nightshade in their name. True. Uh, but apparently uh, they want to be, or he wants to be, whatever. I don't care. That stupid bobblehead thing and Optimus doesn't know how to address him. Wait. And then the, the, yes. The uh, bobblehead is Nightshade? It's going to be the... They're mapping out like a plan, like on a map, and they're like picking different uh, items to be them. And 
Nightshade wants to be that, and Optimus doesn't know how to address him. I'm so confused. I'm confused too, and people are like touting this like it's this amazing thing, and it's just like, it's a show about Transformers. You know, things that transform to cars, to, to, to beings, and they fight uh, Decepticons, whatever. I don't care. It's giant robots transforming into vehicles and in their natural forms fighting each other. Who doesn't want to see, who doesn't love a good mech battle? This is literally mech battles with living robots. No, but you see now, it could be like, you've misgendered me, prepare to die, slash. <laughs> no. Put it this way, they might be called Transformers, but that doesn't make them trans. Oof, that's a good one. So, like, who cares? People are like, this is a major achievement. Yes. Robots everywhere can rejoice. Because now they can be offended at pronouns. Robots don't care about that, even in the real world. It's okay, though. Now they don't have to save the world because it's like, you misgendered me. I'm going to let you all die. A robot getting offended by misgendering decides to take over the planet. Then, yes, we are doomed. Themsepticons attack. <laughs> no. Megatron doesn't have time for that crap. I don't even know what to say. Like, this is just stupid. The reason it's stupid is because they actually had to make this scene. You know what you could have done if you really wanted to make this normalized? Don't make a big deal. Nobody cares. If you want them to be addressed that way, just do it. No one would notice, except for the weirdos on Twitter who would notice. Mm -hmm. But Twitter's supposed to be dead anyway, so I guess it doesn't really matter at this point. <laughs> Well, to be fair, the people on there who notice these things usually are brain dead. So I guess that Twitter being dead along with it actually kind of makes sense. Yeah, they're all vegetables. I don't know anymore. I just think this is stupid. I think this was unnecessary. And I think there's just like zero reason to actually even have this, you know, scene. The entire show could have played out without it. I'm not going to watch this show. I was a big fan of Transformers Prime. Transformers Prime is a good one. In my opinion, Transformers Prime was the best but I don't know what else to say. Uh, enjoy your they, them, icon. Whatever it is. Do they transform to a they and then transform to a them? Is that way they slash? I, I don't know. Nor do I want to know. I don't know anymore. I'm just done. I'm done. You know, keep keep your whatever you want. Uh, I'm sure the five people who watch this show are going to be ecstatic. Yay. Because just so you know, the people on Twitter who are freaking out about it don't actually watch the show or buy the merchandise. They just virtue signal about it on Twitter. That's what they do. Shocking. Let's move on. And next up, we have Pirates of the Caribbean. You forgot one very important thing, mate. No one likes reboots. <laughs> True. Margot Robbie best start believing in ghost stories as the star of Disney's previously announced gender swap entry into the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise has confirmed that the project has officially been scrapped to the depths of Davy Jones' locker. Woohoo! Now, I would love to see another Pirates movie. Reason being is, I'm not saying the other, the last couple ones we've got have been that good. They haven't. Yeah, the fifth one was just weird. But I would love to see JD back in the role of Captain Jack Sparrow because I think that after everything he's had to go through, he deserves it. Oh, yes. There is no pirates without him. And I know that he said that he's not going to work with Disney again and all this other kind of stuff. I, I, I think that there is a number that he would consider or maybe a number of alpacas he would consider. <laughs> But uh, I just think that uh, the idea of making a all-female like reboot of Pirates and whatever, which that's what it was being called, they changed it to a oh female-led. No, it was a lot of places were reporting that it was all females. Just want to make that clear. I imagine that would have ended up like the all-female Ghostbusters. That was a movie. Apparently. Nope. According to Ghostbusters Afterlife, there've been no no ghost sightings in twenty years. Good point. It never happened. I would love to see that just because I think he deserves it. I don't think we're going to get it anytime soon. I think that rebooting it with a different character was a silly idea. I think that potentially having, you know, Margot Robbie in a Pirates movie would not necessarily be a problem to me. I wouldn't mind that. I think that she could probably pull off the kookiness pretty well. Well, she does it pretty well with Harley Quinn. 
but I'm not interested in seeing a Pirates movie without uh, Captain Jack. So keep in mind that you can give us whatever you want. Nobody's going to go see the movie without Captain Jack. And if Disney was smart, they would pay whatever it took to get him back. Because if they make a movie with him in it... People will show up and it will make them money. Yeah, but they won't do it because they don't want to offend A.H., who can't land a role and seems to have very little friends these days. But, I mean, she doesn't do herself any favors. Wait, she had friends? At some point, yes. Wow. Must have had some dirt on them. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. But yeah, no Pirates Without Jack. Uh, Not interested in this reboot. Glad it's being scrapped and hope we don't ever see her or hear from it again. Agreed. Moving on. And next up, we have Andor. Our show isn't bad, but no one is watching. And no one was surprised. Tony Gilroy, the showrunner and creator for the most recent Star Wars series, Andor, recently admitted the show is, quote, chasing the audience, end quote. Because the audience is no longer there. What? But everybody loved The Last Jedi on Twitter. No. No, they did not. I love these people who claim that people who don't like the sequel trilogy or don't like some of the stuff that Disney puts out, especially Star Wars related content, are the minority. If that's the case, they wouldn't have to be releasing this on Hulu and Freeform or whatever to try and get the numbers up. The numbers aren't good for the show. Nobody said that the show's bad. I've actually heard some good things about it. But let me ask, honey, do you have any interest in seeing the show? Absolutely not. Why? I have absolutely no interest because there are no characters I care about and because Star Wars has died. Exactly. For a lot of people, myself included, it's gotten to a point where Star Wars is not just something we don't like anymore. It's something we become like apathetic to. They could bring back Luke Skywalker for all I cared. I just wouldn't even bat an eye. Well, they have in season two of Mandalorian. Yeah, but the point being is that people are so tired of the mediocre garbage we're getting like Obi-Wan and Boba Fett. And again, if you liked Obi-Wan or Boba Fett, you are more than welcome to like it. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people just found it kind of lackluster and kind of lore-breaking, and it became something that people didn't want to watch. Yeah. The only thing Star Wars that I might watch again is Season 7 of Star Wars The Clone Wars, again, because that's a show I like. But right now, I have no interest in doing so. I just don't want to watch anything Star Wars, and it become a, it's become a thing to me that I, I literally don't care. These things used to hit me. They used to make me feel. They used to make me care. And now it's gotten to a point where none of that happens. Nothing. Like, everything they did in Obi-Wan, I didn't care about that much. You guys will know for the past, vid- any video we cover Star Wars in, I don't really care. I don't seem like I care. There have been things that I've obviously gotten passionate about, and as well as things that Raven has gotten passionate about. Yes. But it's not Star Wars anymore. It's gotten to a point where I just don't care. It's not even that I don't think the show's going to do well or whatever. I just don't care. It's kind of part of why I haven't continued The Clone Assassin for for anyone who's read it. That's her fan fiction on Wattpad, which you can find in the links below. Mm-hmm. Uh, but... It's just gotten to a point where it doesn't even make me feel anger anymore. I just don't even care at all. It's the same way I feel about Doctor Who. And I just got to this point where it's just like, I I literally could care less. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I wish I cared. I wish I did. Because that would mean there was still some hope that it could turn around. And there was still some hope that I could enjoy Star Wars again. Right now, there's not even a flicker. So people who get mad at me on Twitter or whatever, they are all mad that I refuse to, like, do this stuff. It's like, I just don't care. And then people are like, show us proof that people are apathetic. No, you literally use your own eyes. The numbers don't lie. The fact of the matter is, Disney has not had to put Star Wars out on Hulu or Freeform or anything before. There are no major Star Wars movies coming out. They keep announcing directors for Star Wars movies and then canceling it for creative differences. Read the room. No one wants to watch Star Wars, and they are constantly losing money under their current leadership. It's just gotten to a point where Star Wars is no longer a special thing. It's become a generic sci-fi brand that you could slap on anything, and it's supposed to make money, and they were hoping that it would. They expected a big built-in audience. The problem is, it's not even about the content. 
It's the way you treat fans, calling them racist, calling them all this kind of stuff. People tune out of trauma. Yeah, there's only so much drama that people can take, especially when it's directed at them. You call someone names when you're trying to market your show? The people you call names are not going to watch your show. It's common sense. But we're only referencing the people who are actual racist. Then call them out specifically. Give us examples. You can't. And the three messages that Moses Ingram got don't count. Four. And no, they don't. Nobody cares about this show anymore. No one cares about this product anymore. It's gotten to a point where literally the people who care about it are either people who mindlessly watch and consume Disney content, people who will post about it on Twitter but not actually watch, or paid shills. There is literally very few people who are from the original core fan base who will continue to watch this garbage because it's garbage. And again, not saying Andor is garbage. The people around Andor and stuff like that are garbage people. They treat fans terribly and they get mad when we don't come. You're literally biting the hand that feeds you. And now you're seeing the consequences. You keep biting our hand, eventually we're not going to feed you. Cause and effect. I was just thinking we'd bite their hands off. No, I don't even care enough to. It's gotten to the point where you, you keep, if I keep trying to feed you, if I keep trying to give you money, here Disney, I will give you money if you do this thing. We hate you, you're bigots, you're racist. Okay, bye. Eventually, I'm going to stop. Eventually, I'm not going to even try because it's not worth it. We try to extend an olive branch to you and you sl you throw it in our faces. I care less about Star Wars now. The original trilogy will always be there. The prequels will always be there. The rest, I couldn't care less about. And even if it was changed now, there's there's no fixing it. You've, you've driven it into the ground. If you left it alone for a couple years, perhaps that would actually bring up a resurgence. But the way it is now you've destroyed it beyond repair. And you'll continue to push out content and realize that exact fact because this is this is going to be the first of many. This is going to be the first of many projects that are going to have terrible numbers because you get what you deserve. Indeed. Moving on. And next we have Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Welcome to Burger King. I, I mean Wakanda. No, nah, it's Burger King. At Shawarma Palace and Shawarma Palace 2, inside Avengers Campus, feast on the Wakandan roast pork wrap featuring spiced pork with black garlic sauce and chermolia? I have no idea how that's pronounced. So, Disney has decided in their infinite wisdom that they're going to put this stuff on Avengers Campus, but they're also going to make food inspired by Wakanda. And it's basically like purple roast chicken and lemonade with purple stuff in it. And that's supposed to be... Wakandan food. You know, you could just serve authentic African cuisine. That's a thing. But that would require effort, and they don't want to do that. Plus, the portion size can be smaller here. Now, I came up with brilliant names for these dishes, but the names for them are so dumb. But I thought vibranium-infused chicken. Is that actually what they call the chicken? No, I came up with the name. Oh. With taste so powerful, you won't need a detector. Not bad. The Wee Wee Roast. That was just funny. And the Namore Eel Plate. That was the best. It's Namore. <laughs> but uh, they're going to have Umbaku there and stuff like that. It's like, come on. Look, it's cringe enough when you make these makeup palettes for every movie you put out now. But this is just, again... Some people liked Wakanda forever, and you're more than welcome to like Wakanda forever, but this is not traditional African cuisine. This is literally, we just put purple food coloring on chicken, please pay for it, we'll charge you a bunch of money. I thought that was purple lighting. I don't even know. Look I at that drink. I would not be surprised if it's food coloring. Look at that drink. Want a sip? No. Want that lovely looking chicken? They do know that purple on food usually means poison, right? Well, it's supposed to be a color that kind of goes along with Black Panther and stuff like that. And again, I'm not saying that they that the food couldn't be good. I'm just saying, like, you literally made it like you're serving, like, this special stuff. And in reality, it's literally, like, the same stuff with purple food coloring on it. Gross. I'd rather keep my food coloring on a birthday cake, thank you. Yeah, I'm just not interested in this. Not that we could ever eat it because we only eat kosher. But that does give us one advantage regarding this. What? We can't eat it anyway. 
good luck with that. Uh, I don't think people are going to pay a lot for your tiny portions. And a lot of people have already kind of called you out on the fact that this is not traditional African cuisine. I know it falls on deaf ears because you guys don't care. But um, yeah, um, enjoy your purple chicken. Yeah, gross. Moving on. And our final client of the day is Indiana Jones 5. Great Scott! Indiana Jones 5 finds our hero in 1969, living against the backdrop of the space race. But the American effort to beat the Russians to the moon brings with it some uncomfortable truths for Indy. Time travel. We're calling it now. Now, a lot of people have said time travel. And again, we cannot confirm this, but I have heard it mentioned a lot. And I know people will say, well, it's not time travel, whatever. We don't know. What we do know is Harrison Ford is too old to do this. They're bringing him back for whatever reason. Chances are Indy's going to die in this one. Let's be frank. Yeah. We've heard rumors that uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge is going to be the one who takes up the mantle of Indiana Jones afterwards. Now, James Mangold himself came out on Twitter and seemed a little bit annoyed and called out certain people by name about this uh, rumor and claimed that it was 100% not true. I'm sorry, uh, James. Uh, does the name Kevin Smith ring any bells to you? I don't know, honey. Do I recall that he came out and, like, debunked... Who was it again? Oh, yeah, Clownfish TV. Debunked them. And then they were right, and then you never apologized because you're a loser. Yeah, it's the whole reason you created fan-blaming bingo in the first place. Exactly. But I have no faith in you. Sorry. Does anyone? Now, is it time travel? Who knows? Do I think that they're going to try to get a female to take up the role? Absolutely. I mean, it's Kathleen Kennedy in charge, so of course that's what they're going to do. And I just don't want to see this. I don't think it even needs to be a thing. You can literally leave it alone. Or if you wanted to, you could make it that one of, Di one of Indy's students was inspired by him and takes up the mantle after him and goes on different adventures. And you could just make it loosely connected to Indiana Jones, but make it a completely separate thing where you could do whatever you want. Or just put on reruns of the young Indiana Jones show. They can't do that. They need more money. They can't just put on reruns. Uh. And they're going to also be making what we've heard a Marion series, which is going to be how Marion grew up and whatever, and probably how she taught Indy everything she kn he knows and whatever. I'm not interested in this movie. The last one, The Crystal Skull, I know that some people liked it and some people didn't. I personally found it didn't work for me. That said, I have no interest in seeing this movie. Maybe it'll be good. Even so, sometimes you can just leave things alone. This is one of those times. Absolutely. I have no interest in seeing this. I don't want to know what's going on behind the scenes here. We're expecting a trailer at some point soon, uh, in the next month, as he said. Um, I do not have high hopes for this at all. Nor do I. You can leave a franchise alone. It doesn't need to be milk dry. Indiana Jones was fine the way it was with the three movies. You added a fourth one, which didn't really add much to it. And again, I know some people liked it, and that's fine. But this one doesn't need to be the case. We don't need to see Indy die. We don't need to see whatever. Just leave it alone. Leave it alone. Why? Because they can. Whatever. I'm just done with this stuff. I have no interest in watching this. I'm going to leave. I, I'm not falling for your crap, Disney. I fell for it with The Last Jedi. I'm not doing it again. I don't care if this movie's good. I'm not watching it. Yes, yeah, same. It is no longer our job to give you the benefit of the doubt. It is your job to prove to us that you know what the heck you're doing. And guess what? Everything we've seen shows us exactly the opposite. So why in the world would I be able to trust you? Oh, wait, that's right. I wouldn't. What he said. Let's move on. And with that being our final client of the day, it is time for us to reveal the diagnosis of the week. And we have an interesting one for you today. Do tell. So the diagnosis for this week is depersonalization disorder. Please explain. Depersonalization disorder occurs when you persistently or repeatedly have the feeling that you're observing yourself from outside your body or the sense that things about you aren't real. It's you're disconnected from thoughts and feelings, surroundings, you're robot-like, you live in a dream world, you're depressed, anxious, and panicky. Now, that sounds like a lot of people that you run into on Twitter and other places. They're so disconnected from reality and themselves that it's almost like they're not even present. They act like robots, they all have the same opinions, and nobody is willing to have arguments or discussions with you. 
And when I say arguments, I mean actual arguments, not ones where they just call you a bunch of names. That's not an argument. These people are so disconnected from reality and everything that they literally can't even come into contact with themselves. And therefore, they know what's going on. They live in this dream world where they believe everything goes the way that they want it to. And it never does. And that's what we're dealing with a lot in Hollywood and especially on Twitter these days. So that's why I feel this is a great diagnosis for this week. I completely agree. And now we move on to the remedy of the week. And this week, we're going to be sending you to our friend, Viking Views, or as we know him on Twitter, Viking Out of Time. And the reason uh, we decided to shout, to shout him out and send you guys over to his channel is because he finally got unbanned on Twitter. Yeah, Viking Out of Time actually got banned on Twitter because he was arguing with some people about the Rings of Power and they mass reported him and his account was taken down. Uh, it's been very hard to get a hold of him since then, uh, but he's back. And we, we wanted to welcome him back uh, royally, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Head on over there and grab your drinking horns. And let him know that gothic therapy referred you. Indeed. But that's all we have for this week. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And also make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe with notifications on. So you do not miss your weekly therapy session. Or you will be charged but remember, when you do subscribe, your first session is free. So smash those buttons like they're bad kitties. And do consider joining our channel at the Dusk, Midnight, or Dawn level. We would appreciate it quite a lot. You can also find links to all of our socials in the description below, as well as links to our merch store and our Discord server known as The Clinic. Be sure to check them out. And stay tuned because the dreaded Wednesday is upon us. We will be reviewing Wednesday. Uh, it should be out. Hopefully at some point this week, we're going to try to do, I think, an episode a day if we can. No guarantees, but we will be reviewing the entire series. So do keep an eye out for our review of episode one of Wednesday. Yeah, we will suffer so you don't have to. You're welcome. Pay us for it. There, there. What? I would like some compensation for my suffering. Whatever. Anyways, uh, <laughs> that's all we have for this week, and we will see you guys in the next one. Gothic therapy out.